Welcome to The Photographer Show, where we talk to you, the everyday photographers in the photo focus community, about your love of photography and dig into some of the fun, nerdy stuff we all love about the art and craft of photography. My name is Scott Wyden-Kipowitz, and I'm joined today, again, by my co-host, Lori Novak. Hello. Hi. Lori. Hi. <laughs> Uh, so, uh, the photographer show is presented by Tamron. Be sure to check out instant savings on select Tamron lenses for your DSLR or mirrorless camera. Go to tamron-usa.com. And today we are talking with Mary Preston Roberts. Hi, Mary. Hi, how are you? I'm doing well. Um, can you tell everybody who's watching this, uh, the show a little bit about yourself? Certainly. Um, I live in TK, South Carolina, and that's about 30 minutes south of Charlotte, North Carolina. I am uh, newly retired after a career in teaching children in the public schools of the Carolinas, and I taught for 33 and a half years. That's so awesome. And yeah. I have been a photographer, very serious about photography since about 2008. Um, in 2016, I started doing some, combining my passions of teaching and photography and doing some photo tours and workshops and things like that. Great. You know, uh, so I have a wife who's a teacher. Um, she's been teaching for just over 10 years so far. Well, she's actually in the process of changing schools. Um, she's going from a school that's about 45 minutes away to a school in town mm -hmm. where she went to growing up. So that's oh, exciting. Wow. And our kids... Our kids will be going there uh, as well. So mommy will be teaching where, you know, our kids go. Um, cool. <laughs> but uh, I, uh, you know, it, it's one of those things where um, we thank our military for their service, but we don't thank our teachers enough. So I'm going to stay right now. Thank you for over 30 years of teaching children. That's a lot of work. That's a lot of heart. And I appreciate, I'm sure all the parents do as well. Well, thank you so much. And I know that your wife will love being in the same school. Um, my son, Jeremy, went to my school um, where I taught. And it was just fabulous to have that experience. That's great. That's great. Um, so we ask our guests the same question first. Okay. And that is, what was your first camera? My very first camera was a Kodak Handle. And it is the camera I received. I asked for for Christmas. Um, I believe I was in junior high school and I received it. I was so excited. I got the camera and a couple of packets of film. And this is right around the time that Polaroid had a lawsuit against them and Polaroid won. And so the handle no longer existed. And that was like my short lived introduction to photography. <laughs> and so then I took a little break for several decades before I got back <laughs> into it fully. But I, I always, I always loved photographs. That's, that's a, that's a fun camera to get started on. Um, <laughs> you know, it, <laughs> that, you know, and I think you're the first to, to, to mention that one as, as a first yeah, camera. I, think so so. I don't a, know that I've ever heard of that. You, you've seen it. You've definitely seen it before. That's for sure. Um, it, it, it looks like a it looks like a Polaroid practically. Oh, okay, okay. <laughs> yeah, um, which had heads the lawsuit. <laughs> right. So, um, so so Mary, I noticed that while looking through your portfolio, that um, you are very drawn to color, and I think it's very obvious when when people look at your work that they're going to see the same thing. Uh, are there certain colors that you're drawn to most? I love red. I'm very drawn to red, bright, screaming red, but the more colorful, the better, certainly. Mm. It's interesting because, so there's a, a former writer at Photofocus, a friend of mine that um, he hasn't written for Photofocus in a very long time, but he, uh, he still teaches photographers and um, he is actually colorblind with red. He cannot see red. Mm. Um, so if you, if by looking at his work, you can tell that he can't see red because he barely photographs red. Um, but uh, so that's, that's interesting that red is your, uh, your, is your favorite. So a lot of your work, and as we'll see, a lot of it is very colorful, like overall. But I did notice that like that um, 
you definitely lean towards the very colorful scene. So it's uh, it's beautiful stuff. And I can't wait for everybody to go and check out more of your work beyond what we're going to share today. Thank you. So, um, you've also traveled to a lot of different places uh, looking you know, at your portfolio, you've got it nicely segmented between like sort of miscellaneous photos and then some of your travel photos and, and whatnot. Um, what's your favorite place that you've traveled so far with your camera? Um, I have not been able to do much international travel, um, but I've been very fortunate to take a couple of trips. Uh, I went to France several years ago and um, I was very moved while I was there by what I saw and experienced, uh, particularly in Arles. Um, I visited uh, places where Van Gogh had been, um, and I was just very moved while I was there. Interesting. Where is, where is that in relation to Paris? Like where, what area? It, well, we, we took a tour of the Provence area. Um, oh, okay, we went, right. Um, to take a workshop photographing lavender mm -hmm. was when it was blooming. It, it was nice. fabulous. Yeah. That probably smelled good too. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> I have I have lavender bushes in the front of our house, yeah, which we planted mainly for the insect, you know, reasoning, like to keep the the bugs away, because uh, I guess the mosquitoes don't like lavender, and uh, they they spread, they get very wide, <laughs> and um, so our front the front by our front door it always smells really good. <laughs> um, so. Van Gogh, um, you said it was Van, so, um, so I, I know some of Van Gogh's work. I don't know all of his work, but uh, I, I'm assuming that most people don't know all of his work. But um, have, did you try to go and photograph some of the stuff that he might have painted? Um, not really. We just went to the area where he was, um, and it was just interesting to see some of the sites that you would see in his paintings, um, the trees. Uh. and and you know, the vegetation that you would see there and not see here. Um, so that was very interesting. Hmm. Yeah, that is cool. Um, so when you, you, you've, you've got your workflow for capturing your photos, um, which you're welcome to get into if you'd like, but I'm curious, and I know that a lot of our viewers are always interested in how photos are edited, um, like what unique workflows each photographer might have. And I'm wondering what is your go-to software for, for editing your work? Um, especially because most of your work is so colorful. I'm wondering if you use a specific tool to work more with colors than others, or if you have a more basic workflow for editing your photos. Certainly. Well, I bring everything into Lightroom and that's what I use to organize my work. Uh, I'll do some basic adjustments in Lightroom. And then I pull everything then over into Photoshop, and that's where I do the majority of my processing in Photoshop. I love mm -hmm. Photoshop. Cool. The, um, so there's a, a, a photographer, Blake Rudis, who has a ton of Photoshop tutorials and like really cool, unique tools, plugins designed for Photoshop. Mm -hmm. um, and his whole his whole thing is. Uh, he actually comes from a painter background before he became a photographer. Um, I believe he even studied that in college. He went to college for painting, I believe. And um, so he's got tools that are all about color in Photoshop and just some, some really, really neat stuff. So I go Google him later. I'll send you a link or something later. Thank you. Um, but uh, yeah, he's got some great stuff. So I want to take a short break to remind everyone that PhotoFocus has launched its own community. Head over to PhotoFocus.com and click on the community link in the menu to join exclusive conversations and events. And you get to talk to Lori all the time. All the time. <laughs> <laughs> um, Lori, do you have any questions for Mary before I get into the next question? No, I don't think so yet. Okay. I'm waiting. So, <laughs> sounds good. Wait, I, I have one quick question. It's not really related, yeah. but did you go to the immersive Van Gogh? Did you get to I see did. the immersive I did Van Gogh? Get to see yeah. that. It was fabulous. They Amazing. had it here in Charlotte. Did you go go as well? Yeah, I did. Yeah, we did. It was it was awesome. Mm -hmm. I just wondered if it like because you had been to where he was, you know, if it if it was even more meaningful to you or I just thought it was really interesting. It's like how his work should be presented, you know, like because you feel like you're in it. It's just very Yeah, it was, um, it was a very Yeah. Cool. 
Um, so you mentioned that your first camera was the uh, Kodak handle. What is the camera that you're using currently? Uh, right now, my uh, camera, my main camera is the D850, my Nikon, nice. and um, I have a D800 that I use as my backup. Nice. Hey, Lori, when we're finding guests for the show, I feel like we're leaning towards Nikon camera users. I, I don't, I, I'm a Canon shooter, so I would not be doing that on purpose. <laughs> oh boy. It's, I, I don't mind. I don't mind. I like it. I'm a Nikon, I'm a Nikon user as well. So it doesn't bother me. I just think I, I just, it just, I just sort of realized it that like, I feel like the last like three guests have been Nikon users. That's but, very interesting. It's um, interesting. Cause I, I it's random. Yeah. I mean, I pick based on, right? on the work, like I know their work or <laughs> have viewed their work and that's usually how I choose people, you know? Yeah. Right. So that's interesting. <laughs> it's, hmm. it's funny. Um, so yeah, great cameras. Uh, I, I used to use both of those. I, I went to the full mirrorless, mm -hmm. but, um, I used to use the 800. I used to use the 850, both amazing cameras. Um, and that A50 is going to last a lifetime if you if you stick with DSLR and don't switch to mirrorless. Mm -hmm. That's a that thing is a it's that's a monster of a camera. Um, so you've got a combination of of landscape work, some some macro work, and can you talk about the different lenses that is sort of like your go to for the different aspects of your photography? Um, I have um, a lots of, I have lots of different choices that I use, but my favorite lenses, honestly, I love my 80 to 400 that I use for intimate landscapes. Um, that's one of the lenses I go to the most. Um, and I also have a 105, 1 1.4. And I have found that I use that quite a lot. I'm using that more often now. The 105, <laughs> is that the Nikon one or the Tamron the one that you have? Or the Nikon, mm -hmm. okay. Yeah, the uh, that I have that one as well, sitting on my shelf behind me. I love that one. Uh, I do plan on switching that to the to the mirrorless version eventually, but it's not a lens I use too often, so I'm not in a rush to switch it over. Mm -hmm. So I'm right now I'm using that um, the FTZ adapter in order to to use it on my Z bodies. But um, great, great lens, and it can be used for portraits as well. So if you ever do portraits, it makes a great portrait lens. So. Um, so, uh, Lori, if you don't have any additional questions, I'm going to go into the photos right. so we can look at those. So, uh, just as a preface to this, I pick photos that stand out to me. Um, Lori has never seen which photos I picked. <laughs> <laughs> I told I told her that I'm like I don't know which photos he's picking. So, yeah, <laughs> um, I usually share, you know, why I picked it, um, what stood out, that kind of thing. So, um, this photo. Uh, and it might look backwards to you uh, right now. Uh, I think when I share the share this, it shows backwards, but um, in the video, it'll be all right. Um, so what stood out to me, first of all, was the tone of this. It's colorful, but colorful with very specific tones, of course. And I really love that you focused on that plant in the foreground sitting on the rocks, but you can clearly see that there's a building and like a lighthouse and all these in the distance. So that's what, that's what stood out to me. Um, if you can please share, like, where was this? Uh, what is going on here? <laughs> it's super foggy. Uh, you know, all that, all the fun stuff about this. We, uh, we want to, we want to hear all about Certainly. it. Um, I went on a trip um, when I was uh, in the Arcanum, I made some fabulous friends and went on a trip uh, with Andy Wheeler um, and several other people in our cohort to Maine. And we rented a house together and just had a fabulous time driving around and doing nothing but photographing and sharing uh, our love for, for photography. And uh, this was one of the lighthouses that we visited. And when we got there, it was completely socked in with fog. You just, you couldn't see your hand in mm. front of your face. Um, and we waited there for a long time, um, patiently hoping that the fog would break. And this was as it was breaking. Um, and it was just like magic when it started breaking and started to look around to see, to see what was there to put in the frame. So this is on its way up from, um, to Bar Harbor. Yes. Right. Uh, uh yeah. So, 
uh, Acadia National Park. Uh, uh, so I have a photo from the same exact location of the same lighthouse in the distance. Uh, also a very foggy day. <laughs> Completely different because it was also raining. It was raining hard that day, so we couldn't stay too long. But um, but uh, I, I recognized it, and I, I wasn't, you know, for sure certain if it was the same spot. But you basically just confirmed it's the same. <laughs> so um, it was, this was a great location. I wish that I had a, a day where it wasn't raining, where I could just you know enjoy the fogginess, and that's it. But um, it looks like you guys got to. To really do that, um, which which is which is fantastic, um, yeah, it's a, such a cool location. Did you happen to also go to the lighthouse as well, or you stayed we on this stayed, side of the water? We stayed on that side. Okay, cool, um, awesome, yeah. Uh, oh, and uh, what kind of uh, you know editing did you do to this? Was it all Lightroom or your Lightroom to Photoshop workflow? Lightroom or, to Photoshop. Uh, I have used um, okay. the Nick filters. And um, mm -hmm. I don't use them as often now as I used to. Um, and I imagine I may have used some, uh, put this through Nick filters as well. Okay. I'm curious, this, um, so this was our Canon days, which means that this is before Lightroom and Photoshop had the dehaze filter. I'm wondering what dehaze would do to the top of that. <laughs> if it would make it worse or if it would, you know, add to it. That would be it. interesting. Um, you know, yeah. It might be worth playing around, not not to say like replace the photo, but I'm just curious, just because that's a that's some heavy fog, and I'm wondering how how good that tool in those software actually could do for mm -hmm. fog like this. It would so, be interesting anyway. to see how it changes the image. I mean, because that's the yeah. mood of the shot. Yeah. You know, that fog is the mood of the yep. shot, and taking yep. it away would be it'd be just a totally different image. But it would it would be yeah. interesting to see how well it does. Yep. So fun experiment for a rainy day, <laughs> pun intended. <laughs> all right. So I mentioned awesome. colorful photos, right? Now, all the four of the photos we're looking at are colorful in their own ways. This is colorful. Again, doesn't have the full gamut of colors, but it is a super colorful photo. And um, it's just a fascinating, you know, uh, landscape of different textures and types of of uh earth materials and stuff so can you share uh, again where this was what's going on here um Certainly. all that stuff um, this is uh, was taken at yellowstone it, excuse me at yellowstone um i have had uh, the privilege to be able to go twice um it's one of my favorite national parks i just love it uh there's so many photographic opportunities and just uh, your sense of wonder as you explore these areas. And I believe this was um, at the top of Mammoth Hot Springs. And on this particular trip, I was with my family. Uh, I have also gone with that same group of photographers who went to Maine um, from the Arcana mm -hmm. to Yellowstone on a trip. Awesome. And this, uh, any anything special you did editing wise or just your typical, um, typical, well, I just like to, I really do. like to bring out the colors that are naturally there um, and kind of emphasize yep. those. And I am drawn to scenes that have, have the bright colors. For sure. Yeah. You even got the, like the sort of teal water, um, you know, that you would naturally see with your bare naked eyes. You're, you're, you you managed to get that, you know, uh, drawn out in, in addition to the, natural deep blue sky and just uh so colorful i love it i love i love how colorful all your Thank work you. is <laughs> <laughs> um next one is uh we're going from bright awesome. to Thank dark you. also super colorful um gorgeous uh light from the sun in the background um and the reflections of that light in the water is just stunning um, and of course the framing, you kind of, you, you perfectly nailed the framing between, you know, all the different trees coming out of the water and, uh, and whatnot. So, um, where well, is this you. one? This from? was taken on Capers Island. Um, there's a group of photographers that are in my area that we do certain things together. And one of the things that we have done is go and camp on this island. So you take a boat to the island. And the boat leaves you there and then you're there for the weekend and you just explore the island with your camera 
and it's fabulous. And this was a morning while we were there camping. Nice. That's so cool. So, yeah, yeah. Um, and so was this tripod handheld? Um, were you going for longer exposure or just going with the flow type of, you know, this type was, of thing? This was tripod. I, most of the time up until just recently, I've taken almost everything using tripod. Just recently I've been mm. exploring and enjoying the freedom of not doing as much with the tripod. Right. Right. I, um, so at the time we're recording this, I'm a few days away from going out mm -hmm. of the country. And unfortunately it's, um, only basically two days, one of which I have to explore. The other is working. <laughs> and <laughs> I, I had an internal debate with myself and I, I even asked some friends and family to, for feedback, but I'm like, do I bring a tripod? It's and I'm like, I have one day, literally one day to explore the city. And it's not even a full day. Um, so I decided not to. I'm going handheld. My first time in this country, I'm going handheld for the entire two-day trip. What um, about a small but I am bringing one? Or like, a, uh, yeah. So or I like reviewed a... the Mantis pod for, for Photo Focus. Right. Um, and I'm bringing that. So I'm going to okay. have a... I was going to say, or even like a platypod or something just in case, right. you know? Yeah. Yeah. So I'm going to have this this uh, very versatile tabletop mm -hmm. tripod. But it... I'm, I, when I have my tripod and I get into the, what I call the Zen zone, it's like, there's nothing better. Right. <laughs> um, but, but I, I don't have the time for it. And, um, right. Being able to have that freedom to, to walk around the city with my coworkers and whatnot. Uh, that, at least that one day I, you know, so I, I totally get your, um, your, your desire to, and, um, you know, enjoyment of the freedom aspect <laughs> Un unencumbered <laughs> yeah yeah um all right last photo so we're going again a whole nother style of colorful um it again has this very um sort of common tonal quality to it as like the first one did obviously a very different tone but um we know where this was photographed <laughs> And um, so I don't really have to guess too much on this one, but uh, I I love first of all the composition of this. Um, I'm a big fan of beautiful trees or plants, flowers in front of what really is the subject matter. I think framing wise, composition wise, you 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 picked a good one and you and you got it right. Um, and I I really like that it's sort of got this sort of matte tone as well as well as like the sort of similar color tones it's got this matte feel to it as well which i really like um so can you talk a little bit about Certainly. this one um i love dc i didn't get the opportunity to go until um i was in middle age and um i've been several times now and i just love it and especially in the spring when these are um, blooming and uh my birthday yep. just happens to be around the time that they're blooming. So I asked for a trip for my birthday to go and see the um, trees blossoming. And we hit it just perfectly. And it was just spectacular um, and enjoyed photographing. Nice. And my husband is so patient and um, so <laughs> supportive of me and my photography. So I'm very thankful. Mm -hmm. Did you I love walk around the whole... Go, oh, go sorry. Ahead, I was gonna say I, I love that this is a different view that you don't normally see. Yes. Um, yeah. I don't know where you took this from. You know, usually you would know exactly where somebody took the photo of like <laughs> right. the Capitol from because you're in the middle of all of it. But this is definitely a different perspective from a different location than you typically you. see. Yeah. Um, I was gonna ask, did you did you walk around the whole like there's like a that sidewalk path? that goes around a lot of that water. Um, did you walk around or you oh, sort of- we do lots of walking. Was it yes. like a pass? <laughs> lots of walking. <laughs> good, good. Awesome. Yeah, this is a, it's a, um, about, uh, I guess two years ago, I, or I, at this point, oh man, I guess it was like three or four years ago at this point. Oy. <laughs> um, time does fly. Uh, we, we were in the same spot. Um, we walked around, um, uh, we had a, a day in, in, in DC on a, on a, family trip and um 
we did the same the same walk. I saw the same view. I love it. Uh, and I have a fun fact for you that those same cherry blossoms um, that you know that that came mm -hmm. from overseas years and years and years ago uh, were also split up, and some of them are planted in New Jersey oh, where I live wow. at a park in newark new jersey called branch book branchburg oh, park fabulous um yeah so at the same exact time of year the same seedlings that are now giant trees blossom the same exact way and look identical to this that's <laughs> awesome all right uh so th those are great i love i love your work like i said early on in this conversation um i love how colorful everything is that you that you do um so Lori, if you have, if you don't have any other questions, I have my last question. I do. For, uh, I, I wanted to, I would, I just wanted to talk a little bit about the Julia Margaret Cameron award and, and um, like what, what made you enter it? I mean, cause it's been around and some of us Hi. have entered over the years and one or one different categories are placed in honorable mentions and stuff. And, and I see that you did and congratulations. Thank cause you. that's awesome. Um, Mary got, what did you get? You got the winner in the category for self-portrait through women seen by women, single image. And you got an honorable mention on a landscape. And an was there something else? I got an honorable mention on was another self-portrait and an honorable mention oh. on 12 images that came from my project with children that I did at school. Oh, awesome. So, I mean. I didn't see you post was, that part of it. I saw the other two astounded and thrilled that's such and, a yeah that's, um, that's i learned awesome. as a conscious honestly because of you and my friend athena um is is uh, how yeah. i became aware of it and then um just been looking into it um and researching it so i yes i'm quite honored thank that's, you that's awesome congratulations um, i didn't is, know i didn't know really that the school kids one was part of it too that that wasn't uh, you didn't you didn't include them in your post. <laughs> yeah, yes, that that, that um, one as well. So there's 12 images from that project, and that those those pictures are dear awesome. dear to my heart. I love that. That was that was an amazing project, Mary, and her because it was her last year of teaching, took photos of each individual student, and what you kind of did um, backgrounds and composites that that went with their personalities, and and they just they're so Thank cool. You. The head, it's awesome. so meaningful for you, but I'm sure for the kids right. and their parents Thanks as so well. Much. Very creative. Yeah, it was, that was awesome. So congratulations. I just wanted to bring that up. Yeah. <laughs> I, I really hope that, that um, your school threw a, a big celebration for you when you, uh, well, when when you I retired. Well, when I retired, it was right from, in the middle of teaching. COVID. So we had a real big, like, Zoom celebration. <laughs> Virtual celebration. Uh. <laughs> <laughs> it's so funny how things like the the, the past two years everything everything changed <laughs> so, yep. It's so, yep. it's so crazy that that something like like i don't know it could have been outside everybody's separate but nope they'll, they, they do it on zoom <laughs> but it's okay whatever they still did it <laughs> um so my last question to you mary is uh if you can please share a tip for photographers about a technique or equipment or something that they can walk away from Give it a try. Um, yeah, anything like anything you want to share that can uh, that everybody Certainly. can walk away from. Um, with. I'm not <laughs> necessarily a technical photographer, um, but I've really worked hard mm -hmm. to learn this. Um, as a as an educator, excuse me, as an educator, I always taught my children to be lifelong learners and wanted them to be lifelong learners. And I think that's really important in photography that you're constantly learning. Um, I love photography books. I collect photography books. I pour over them. I study them. I enjoy them. Um, I seek out learning um, through all kinds of avenues, being parts of wonderful groups like the scavenger hunt. Um, so many groups that I'm involved in. When I was a participant in the Arcanum, I grew a great deal that way. And I'm always striving to learn, be it by workshops or reading. Um, I think that would be my biggest tip is to always continue your learning and try new things because I started out primarily as a nature photographer, um, but by participating in other things and learning other things, I now photograph a variety of subjects and really enjoy it. 
And you're always really good at sharing your process as well. So like you, your blog posts are, are great. And I love the way you do them. And you're like, here's this new thing that I'm trying and I'm working on right now. And you, you share the images that you're creating from what you're learning. And, and, it, and that's awesome because then people like me and other photographers can learn just from you sharing what you're learning at the same time. Mm-hmm. But your your blog is very well done in that in that aspect and and you sharing the information that you're learning and and putting it out there as you're well, learning thank you. it. I really appreciate that. Yeah, that and uh, your advice was was very very good advice. I, I definitely strongly recommend the same exact thing. Um, uh, picking up books, listening to podcasts, watching webinars, uh, reading articles, reading. Uh, tutorials, watching tutorials, um, just going and trying and failing and then trying again. And um, if you're used to having a tripod, throw it on the floor and go walk around and be free, right? So um, unless, of course, what you're trying requires a (laughs) tripod, then that's a different story. (laughs) That's my my 2022 resolution is to use a tripod more because I I hardly ever use one now. So I'm going to going to try. <laughs> yeah. Well, it, it, it's, it's interesting because your, your style of architecture photography doesn't require a tripod, but no, you never no. know. It could also work well but with a tripod certain, at the same time. Right. And there's certain times where I'll bring images in and upload them and be like, they're just not quite sharp yeah. because it was windy or I was moving or I was standing on a bridge that had cars going over it or whatever. And yeah, I, I mean, a tripod might not help that, but you know, yeah. It there's just sometimes there's a little bit of sharpness missing from my images that I think a tripod yeah. would help. <laughs> so, I'm gonna I I I I'm gonna say it here officially that um, in 2022, one tripod company needs to, has to, and will create a tripod that literally fits in anybody's bag, but and is is fast to expand and contract but will also not be made poorly, will be made very well so that it can actually hold a tripod without you running the risk of it falling over. Um, Because you've got companies like Platypod, you've got companies like SwitchPod and this uh, Mantis Pod that I have it packed up already, so I can't even show you, that I I reviewed on on PhotoFocus, so check that out. That... um, that are really innovating in the tripod space, but yeah. nobody's making something that is truly a portable yet well-built sturdy tripod. And I, right. it's gotta be possible, right? So um, for the people who don't need it for long exposures, who don't need it for this or that, that just need, I need a tripod right now for this photo before it's too late, right? Um, when you're in the moment. So that's my prediction. It's gonna <laughs> happen in 2022. Get on that. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Um, and if some if 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 a tripod company is watching this and wants to partner with me on creating it, <laughs> by the way, <laughs> by the way, anyway, so so Mary, can you share with everybody uh, the best place for them to learn more about you, see the rest of your beautifully colorful work? Certainly, um, my website is www.themaryphotographer, M A R Y, and I'm also on Instagram at Mary Preston Roberts. So either of those places. Awesome. Cool. Awesome. Thank you, Mary, for joining Lori and I today on The Photographer Show. We really appreciate it. We love looking at your work. And uh, it's been great learning more about you and, and your work. And um, we look forward to talking with you soon. Thank you. It's been a pleasure talking to you. I really appreciate it. Have a great day.